A person who smiles like that cannot be mean, right? Olena Snishko carefully preserves all memories about her grandfather. He was arrested in 1949 on someone's denunciation. He was sent to a concentration camp. He was imprisoned in a colony in Buratia. The family of Lev Lubarov never saw him again. The death certificate says he died in 1953 while serving a prison term. No one knows what actually happened at the time. The repressive machine started working actively during the reign of Joseph Stalin. Nonconformists fell under the so-called purge. NKVD officers obtained confessions from people under torture and fabricated the evidence. Right now we are in the interrogation cell. As a rule, prisoners were brought here from 1 a.m. to 5 p.m. This prison, now a museum in Lviv, once belonged to the NKVD. Similar prisons were established all over Ukraine. There were situations when too many people were brought here at once. Sometimes they put up to 10 people in a cell intended for one. Inmates could only stand in such conditions. There was also a shooting cell. People spent several days to several years there. Prisoners were shot secretly. Their families were never informed. At first they would take one prisoner at a time and shoot him, but then they realized that it was taking up a lot of time and decided to work in speed mode. They would open a little window for food and throw in a grenade. After the explosion they would shoot people through that same window with a rifle. This place is located only 20 kilometers from Kiev. It used to be a forest before the NKVD turned it into a huge secret burial ground in 1930s. Bikivnya is the largest mass grave site of the Great Terror in Ukraine. A land plot for the NKVD's so-called night crew was allocated by the Kiev City Council on March 20, 1937. According to documents, the size of the plot exceeded 4 hectares, but according to archaeologists, the real area is 5.3 hectares. It was a secret zone. The land was enclosed with a thick green fence. The planks were nailed together really tightly, so nothing could be seen through them. According to the witnesses, the fence was up to 3 meters high. There was also a guardhouse and a watching tower. The site remained fully functioning for four whole years. Dead bodies were brought here through the so-called death row. They would drive up in trucks filled to the top. They dumped bodies into previously dug-out pits and covered them with earth. Up to 10 cars could come here overnight. The total number of the buried here is still not completely known. As of today, 18 and a half thousand surnames have been identified. However, this data is not complete. A significant number of archived documents were destroyed by the Soviet regime or marked top secret in Russia. Lieutenant Colonel Lubarov was rehabilitated posthumously in 1956. Olena knows her grandfather only from family photos. How much do you need to hate your own country that you would exterminate the best talents in science, culture and the intelligentsia? According to historians, during the years that Stalin was in power, from 1921 until 1953, more than three and a half million people were persecuted. More than half a million of them were killed. Reported by Lubov Zadorozhna and Yulia Bil for UATV.